Hey there, everybody. Fun Stampers Journey Coach Direct, Janice Whiting here. I am coach number 49, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I colored these cutie patootie pies right here. So I used our um, Fun Stampers Journey Color Burst pencils, these right here. They are our high quality, um, basically a colored pencil, but they are a lot. Um, What's, they're different than your regular colored pencil. They're kind of like a mix of, so they're wax-based, but they have a nice oil coating and it makes coloring with these pencils just super smooth and velvety and they're super fun to play with. Um, anyway, so I am going to go ahead and jump into how I colored these uh, Tootie Patootie Pies, the full one, and then um, the half uh, little slice of pie there as well. I'm gonna tell you the colors I used and um, and then that and then that's it. All right, here I go. Okay, so what I have here is um, all the pencils that I use to color our cards, um, the images on the cards. So um, including uh, this this uh, apple slice, this pie slice, the um, cinnamon, and the apple. Here are the apple slices, the green apple, and of course the pies, which I'm gonna uh, demonstrate today. So, just so you know the colors that I used, I used, let's see here, 03 and 02 for the apple and the apple slices. Um, for the um, green apples, I used 021, 022, and 023. Um, I also used 48 for some blending in um, some of the light areas, um, like in here and in the center of the green apple. Um, and then I used um, 40, 15, where am I here, 8, 38, and 39 for um, the pies. Now for the full pie, I only used these three right here. So for eight, 38, and 39, okay? And that is what I'm going to demonstrate right now. So I'm gonna see if I can zoom in a little bit more. Right, oops, let focus. There we go, that's pretty good right there. Okay. So you would just excuse me, I've got a little bit of a cough. It's finally starting to get um, cool weather, so I'm thankful for that. But with that comes the sore throat and all that stuff. So anyway, bear with me here. Okay, so for the be to begin with, again, we're creating um, or we're coloring this fun um, pie image there. Um, we're going to use our um, number eight pencil, color burst pencil. It's kind of like what I, I consider this like a peach, like a, a flesh tone um, color. So what I did was I just lightly colored over the entire surface. So this is kind of like my base color. And I am using very light pressure um, and just kind of um, coloring it all. Now you will notice that on my um, pie, I cut, I fussy cut all the way around the pie um, up to the black line outline of it. And so I didn't worry so much about coloring outside of the image. Um, so, but if you are wanting to fussy cut where you leave a little bit of space around it, then just obviously be mindful of that. Okay, so right now I'm just kind of, again, just kind of filling in. You will notice um, when you color with these color burst pencils that they're just super smooth. I mean, just real velvety. Now, a tip I have um, for you is when you're coloring a larger image um, or even just an image that has a, a space more than just like a little bitty section, I always start off with a, um, a dull, um, like just, I don't want my pencil to be too sharp because if it's sharp, it's gonna give me a line and I don't want a line. Um, I just want a nice smooth kind of overall uh, finish to my image. So there is something for you. Now, if I wanted a nice detailed little section and I wanted it to be dark, then I would sharpen this and have a nice sharp edge. 
Um, I know a lot of times we think colored pencils, we want to sharpen it to a nice, you know, point, but that's not always desired depending upon what you're going for. Okay, so now I've got a nice space using the uh, number eight pencil. Now I'm gonna go and I am going to use my number 38. Now here's something else about these pencils that I have found um, helpful. It's not, there. you may be able to tell the color difference between these two by looking at the, at the end here that they've painted. There's a, maybe a slight difference. That doesn't always help me. What I like to look at is I like to look at the tips. Now, if I look at the tips of the pencils, let me see if I can get this to focus. Maybe not, that might be too up close. Yeah, well, if you have these um, pencils and you have them in front of you, then you actually will be able to tell it quite a difference between this one and this one, although I don't think it's picking up on camera. Um, but of course, the fail safe is to test it on a piece of paper and see what, you know, what, how light and dark these are. So if you, if you can see that there, this first one is quite light, much lighter than the second. So I want to start with my lighter tone, which again is number 38. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to kind of, so I'm thinking of what a real pie looks like, right? So I'm thinking of those nice, beautiful, um, uh, I was about to say <laughs> not burnt, but just really warmed um, areas where, you know, when you stuck it in the oven and it really turn, turned a lovely golden brown on the crust. That's what, those are my like favorites, you know, when you've just baked it just so perfectly that it's lovely golden brown crust. Uh, so that is kind of what I'm going for here. I'm just gonna do that on the um, edges, on the sides. Again, thinking of what a real pie would look like, maybe your ideal real pie. I know some people like them less golden brown than others, but, um, we all can agree a nice, beautiful crust is just, you know, awesome. Makes it just that much more delicious. So along the edges, of course, because that's where it kind of browns first. And then here along the inside. Okay, so there's, again, here we're just kind of adding a little bit of some shading, right? Because once that crust, you've got that lip of the crust that creates a little bit of a shadow there. So lightly, again, I'm gonna go inside under here. Okay. Um, and then I'm gonna do a little bit on the insides here. That's gonna show the apple, the yummy caramelized, sugary apple filling. So I'm gonna do that. And I'm not doing this, I'm not using a lot of pressure here because I'm gonna go back with my darker brown, my number 39, and fill this in a little bit more, okay? Um, the next thing I wanna do, so I've kind of outlined the edges and outlined where all the lines are. I'm gonna come in and I am going to just shade a little bit inside some of these um, kind of triangular areas, you know, little pie sections and just give it a little bit of browns. So again, thinking of that pie crust that has um, browned to perfection, that lovely golden brown. And I'm kind of going in circles a little bit because I don't want like this perfect line. I kind of want it to be very, uh, to fade naturally. Okay. And there. Go back a little bit over some of these areas. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and use the darker brown to add some contrast, and then I might go back and add a little bit more of my um, number eight pencil here uh, in a minute. So again, now here for the darker. Again, so with the darker pencil, I'm just gonna only add the dark color to where I feel like there's either gonna be a shadow or I know that um, it would be naturally dark. So inside here, kind of on the edges, or not the edges, this little end here, depending upon what kind of apple filling you've put in, how much awesome brownness you've achieved there. Definitely again, the shadows. And again, circular motion um, will help. 
maybe some of these edges here can use a little bit of browning. Definitely here where there's already natural lines for shading. Okay, now I'm gonna come back over with this pencil and I'm gonna use this to blend a little bit, okay? So we do have our blending um, stumps here that we can use. Um, I oftentimes love to blend using a, the lighter color uh, because it's not gonna add, you know, it's not gonna change the effect too much, but it will blend those um, colors you've already laid down fairly nicely. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit more of the darker brown and then we're going to call this one pretty close to done here. Of course, the last step is to cut it out and then add some of that wonderful sparkle cuts that give it just that extra special touch. It makes it look like it's got a, a um, sugar sprinkled on top of the pie, which is always awesome. I'm going to use this orange one here. Again, like I'm not necessarily going for something specific. I just am trying to, you know, add a, just a little bit more color um, to the pie crust. Again, trying to think back to the pies we just had at Thanksgiving and what that crust looked like and what your desired um, effect is. And I think, I think I've got it. I think I've achieved it. Okay, so now at this point you can um, use your uh, blending stick to um, blend those colors together and it's really simple to do you just you know you have your stick and you're going to take it and you're going to just go over all the areas now what this is doing is it's taking that oil that was that coating that was on that um, pen on those pencils and it's using it to blend the colors together and it's going to take away some of the streakiness that you might have had depending upon how sharp your pencil was or what kind of lines you used and that just kind of brings it all together and it just gives it just this awesome neat effect okay so there's my pie now again if you look at the original Okay, there it is, beautiful. Now, what it's missing is that awesome sparkle cut um, effect. So our sparkle cuts, basically our sparkle cuts are a nice, chunky glitter. So they look like this. Okay, let's see, I might be zoomed in a little bit too much. Um, I'm gonna open it so you can kind of see what they, um, what they look like. I think I grabbed a new one. There we go. Okay, so do you see that? Aren't they fun? So I'm gonna see if I can pour some out on our, on our little media tray here. So you can kind of see. They're just really, like I said, a fine, I say fine, uh, a chunky glitter. So just your regular normal glitter, but they're chunkier than your super fine extra extra smooth glitter that we have that we call our our um, journey uh, dust sparkle dust. So this is our sparkle cuts, and our journey dust um, would be more of your like your fine your fine glitter. Okay, so I'm gonna put this back in the bottle, and then we will add it to our pie. Okay. So we're going to add it to our pie using our Journey Glaze. Now our Journey Glaze is, is basically a uh, mixture of a glaze and a resin. Okay, it dries super clear and it's flexible. So it will not crack on you. Um, it will not turn uh, yellow on you. Um, I mean, this is a fun glaze to add texture or to add a fun dimension to your um, different elements. So I'm going to pour this uh, just a light coat directly on top of my pie, all over it, 
Now, um, you could have cut it out first, and I think normally I probably would have. This is one of those things that once it's on the card and once you've assembled everything, then you can do that. But for the sake of the demo, I'll go ahead and just do it directly to the card. Again, just a light coating all over. And in a second here, I will lift it up a little bit so you can kind of see what that looks like um, a little bit more up close. And a little bit more in this section, and I think I'm pretty close to getting it all there. Okay, so you can actually see right there, it automatically gave you that shine, okay? So again, like I said, it's a glaze resin mixture, um, so you can use it um, as an adhesive as well, okay? So like a liquid glue. All right, so at this point, I'm going to take my media tray here, which is awesome, um, and I'm going to just sprinkle these sparkle cuts right over it. And you can put a lot, you can put a little, it's however much you want. Okay, and then you're just gonna tap the excess off onto your tray. And voila, you have that awesome sugar-coated um, apple pie that is just so fun and adds really cool, neat um, elements to your card. Isn't that awesome? Okay, so now that I've done this, uh, this uh, whole pie, let me go ahead and um, show you how I colored the slice of pie, okay? Now it's pretty much the same thing. Um, so with the pie, um, I did not add any yellow to that, to that, and then but then with the pie, the pie slice, I kept thinking um, as I was coloring, I was like, it needs a little bit more yellow to kind of really, uh, you know, the apple pie filling in my mind has a little bit more yellow, so I added some yellow to it, um, and that's how I obtained um, kind of this look to the pie. Okay, so that's what we're going for um, with this one. Now the pie crust. You do use the same thing, same same method, same technique, same colors. So starting with number eight, you're just going to color lightly over the entire pie crust. And don't forget the bottom, okay, because the bottom is the same. There we go. Okay, and then we take our lighter one, again, number 38 uh, pencil there. And we are going to do similar to what we did um, with the other one, which is just along the outline, the contour of the pie, just wherever it has the little automatic uh, lines that would automatically bring shading. Because remember, this is kind of like that basket weave so you've got some dough overlapping lots of different sections and of course the edges of the pie definitely are more browned. Um, and again, I'm using a combination of circular motion and then also just strokes that go along the lines of the pie. Okay, along the edge there and then on the bottom. And the bottom is not as brown as the top because it doesn't, you know, receive that direct heat. But I still like to add a little bit of it anyway. It's good for contrast. I'm going to come back over with um, the lighter peach color number eight again. Just adding some blending here. And with this one, I like to, it's like, again, you're thinking of that basket weave. So... Um, along the edges would be where it's more brown and then kind of in the center of each little section would be the lighter sections. So coming back in here with the darker pencil, just along the edges and some of these highlighted, these little lines that are already there. Inside, along the lines here, these lines, along the edges here. So I'm purposely leaving some of these sections lighter, okay, because that's, um, you know, where naturally it would be lightest. 
All right, I'm gonna come back in here again and I'm gonna try to blend this out a little bit with um, my lighter color number eight. So again, wherever you want to have more blending, go in a circular motion. And wherever you want to have defined lines, then go along the sides or along the edges of your um, image in the direction that those lines are going. Now I'm not gonna put any of the darker brown down here, just the lighter one and the peach color number eight. All right, okay, so now that I've added a little bit of brown on the edges, I've left some of the sections a little bit lighter. Now I'm gonna go ahead and um, blend in with my, with my blending stump. And I think I wanna color this a little bit more actually. I don't quite like it quite that light, there we go. All right, so now I'm gonna come in with my blending stump and I'm going to blend and mix and try to smooth out some of those lines that I created. The bottom one's not so much. Okay, so there is my pie and, or my pie crust. And again, if I wanted to, which for the sake of the demo, I'm not going to, but if you wanted to add more color and make it more brown, you can just, you know, go ahead and come back around and add some more. Just because you blended it doesn't mean that you're, you know, you have to be done. You can always come back and add um, a little bit more color to it if you'd like. Okay, so now for um, the pie filling. So with the pie filling, I did start out with number eight first, very lightly and kind of in a circular or ovular motion, kind of going up and down in circles here. And I started off with this color and then I was, I was when I was thinking, I was like, I think I want some more yellow in it to make it more apple pie. So I used, or apple pie filling, I used number 15 on this one. And I tried to go as light as I possibly could because I didn't want it to be overly yellow. I just wanted it to, to look like what apple pie filling looks like, which is just kind of like this yellow, goldenish kind of yellow, um, brownish kind of look or color. Okay, and then um, and then I did use the lightest brown, which was number 38, um, and I used that to add some contrast to these little sections. So here I'm thinking of like cooked apple chunks, um, you know, that are, tend to be a little bit more brown. And then of course the shadow, um, that would be the, the crust over the filling and along the edges. That's really kind of all I did here. I can, again, towards the bottom here, added a little bit more color. Tried to extend some of those lines that are already there to, you know, give it kind of like that, again, just that chunky apple feeling kind of look and feel to it. And Maybe just lightly go over it with the yellow one more time. And then from there, I'm gonna to try to blend it out with my number eight. There we go. Again, remember my number eight's my lightest, so that's a technique that you can use. You can use the blending stick or you can blend it out with your lightest color that you've chosen for your design. Okay, and again, they blend so well together, again, because of that nice oil coating that our pencils have that your other pencils do not have. Okay, all right. So at this point, I can take my blending stick and I can blend away. I don't know if I necessarily needed to, but I always like to have a smooth image. Okay, and now it's ready for our um, sparkle cuts at the top. Remember, we're using our Journey Glaze. Now our Journey Glaze comes in two sizes. It comes in a two ounce 
and a four ounce, okay? Um, I always say get the four ounce just because I use it for so many different things and you can too. Um, I love adding this element here. I used it here for the green apple. See that shine there on the green apple? So a shiny green apple. And then I used it on our red apples as well. There it is. Again, shiny apple. And then you're going to put it all over the top here, just like I did on the other one. Oops, I'm out of the camera's view. There I am. And just as far as I can, or as much as I can do. Again, a thin layer. We don't need lots and lots. Um, the more glaze that you put on, the longer it will take to dry. So just keep that in mind. Um, a thin layer goes a long way, but you just keep in mind that if it goes too thin, then it might be uneven. So always just kind of stop and look and see how it's um, covering it. So let's see here, you can kind of pick up, um, there we go. It's, it's fairly decent coverage there. And so from here, again, I'll take my sparkle cuts. And again, our sparkle cuts are a nice, thick, chunky glitter. So really good um, uh, substitute for if you wanted to make it look like sugar or if you just like that extra bling. And then tap it. And I'm just using a random brush there. And voila, now you have that delicious looking piece of apple pie. Isn't that fun? So of course I would let that dry um, and then you would cut it out and place it onto your card um, or wherever you want to use it. All right, so there you have it. Um, hopefully that was um, helpful. <laughs> <laughs> um, for you to uh, know how to color these um, pies, these pie images. And you know what, these techniques that I used or that I showed you today, you can transfer them on to coloring different things, okay? So again, using, um, so let me just review. I used these three, uh-oh, that went on my wet pie should be okay. Um, so I use these three to color the pie crust, right? Um, and again, if you use kind of color, three colors of the same kind of color family, so this is like a peachy color and then some light browns, these kind of go naturally together. If you think about colors that go together, um, the, the, that will help you as far as getting a nice smooth, achieving a nice smooth uh, look that um, doesn't look like, you know, um, a three-year-old's colored because <laughs> sometimes that happens and that's okay if you're there that's not a problem that's why we're um, giving you these tutorials to help you improve your coloring um, not that I am some amazing artist because I am not I I just I know some basic coloring principles and um, have colored um, a little bit and uh, want to pass on the info to you. So anyway, coloring in colors, uh, groups of three or colors that are in the same color family are always helpful. Um, so for example, when I colored the this apple, so I'm gonna bring it over here. Um, when you use multiple shades of one color, it kind of brings it out from just this flat, I colored a green apple image to one that has a little bit more dimension. Um, so with this one, this green apple, um, I used 21, the lightest, as, uh, as the base color. And then I came back with 22, which is a little bit darker, and I added that, it's probably hard to tell, but I added it on the edges here. Um, and even just a little bit on this edge. Um, and then back with, came back with 23, uh, just a tad here, just on the very edges here, and then a little bit in the center of the leaf there. Um, and that kind of helped it uh, go from kind of plain boring green apple to just a little bit more dimension. Um, and I know some of you guys are amazing, uh, color colorers, color artists out there, um, and you probably already do that. So again, I used 21, 22, and 23 for my apple coloring. Um, and then for my red apple, this one here, okay, similar. 
I used number two and number three of our color burst pencils to create that look. Um, and then the number uh, 48 to kind of help with the lightening of the center. All right. Um, I think that's it. So there are some coloring tips for you. Um, this card, these cards that I was showing you came from our November Bloom Box. Um, it is our kit of the month and it is a six month subscription. So if you're interested, just go ahead and go to my website, www.funstampersjourney.com forward slash Janice Whiting. And you can click on Bloom Box and it'll get you all the info there and take you through the sign up process. Um, if you, um, so if you like this set, um, because it is only available through our Bloom Box, you will either have to join or you can wait for three months. So our set is exclusive to our Bloom Box subscribers for three months. And then after three months, it will become available. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions for me, um, just bring them up shoot a little comment below. Let me know what you think. Um, I'm going to try to do a couple more videos here while I can, while we're on Thanksgiving break. Um, take advantage of my free time, right? Um, so stay tuned. All right. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time. Bye.